Welcome back, everyone. We are very lucky to have Brian Buckmeyer back in the studio, and he's going to tell us what happened with the Weinstein trial today. He was in court, and Brian, I guess the first thing I have to ask you is what happened? Was there more cross-examination of Jessica Mann? Exactly what did you see today? All right, so for the most part today, we got to see Lauren Young, who is not a complainant or a victim in this case. She's actually a Molino witness. She talked about an incident between her and Harvey Weinstein where she was forced into a bathroom with another young lady. Now, the story goes that they went downstairs in the lobby. They were talking about one of her scripts. Harvey, not really paying attention, said, let's go back upstairs. When they did that, Harvey... Lauren and then Claudia Salinas walked up into the room. Now, when Harvey walked in, shortly behind him was this witness who testified, Lauren Young, and she says that Claudia had closed the door behind her. It's at that point in time that she said Harvey took off his clothes faster than she's ever seen anyone take their clothes off. She was there in the bathroom, he's in the shower rinsing himself off, and as she's attempting to leave, he blocks her way in. It was very riveting. Now, after that, she says that Harvey pushes her up against the sink. She turns around as he's trying to touch her. He unzips her dress, tries to touch her. She turns back around. He grabs her right chest. And while he's doing that, sorry to say, he's saying, she's saying that he started masturbating, that he attempted to try to touch her vagina, and that afterwards, throwing her, his hands away, she finally got away. Now, she said that she tried to get out of the room, but some of that kind of got lost in the cross-examination. On direct, she said that she couldn't get to the door because Harvey was blocking her. On cross-examination, the defense was able to get out that there were some discrepancies in the stories as to how she laid out how she's going to get out and how she got into the, to the bathroom. You know what, Brian, one of the things I am really wondering, if you had a chance to look at the jury, how they are responding to these types of questions and these types of answers, the very graphic detail. We know that there are seven men and five women on the jury. Are you noticing that they are having a different type of reaction to these questions? I mean, I think they have seen it all at this point. Uh, and in previous testimony, they got to see photos taken from the DA's office of Harvey Weinstein naked. So I think after you've seen that, you've kind of seen it all. They did get to see an artist's rendition by this witness, Laura Young, Lauren Young, sorry, um, of her drawing out what uh, Harvey Weinstein looks like naked. And again, you hear the same story of uh, lots of rolls, uh, a penis, a lack of testicles. Uh, when I saw them look at that photo, very stoic, very serious. A lot of the men kind of shrugged it off. Some of the women grimaced. Uh, but I think the more important part about the jury is not necessarily the gender or the race, but actually the age. I look at that jury, and I see most of them in their mid to late 30s, if not older. And I think for a case where the prosecution is trying to say, hey, that precondition that you have as to what a rape victim does and what it looks like, that's something you have to change. I think it's going to be hard to convince some of the older jurors of that. I think you're right, Brian. Let me ask you this. What should we expect for tomorrow? Will we have more witnesses on the stand? Do we think Weinstein himself will get on the stand? So luckily enough, I've had the opportunity to speak a little bit with Arthur and some of the other court officers and, and, op and uh, attorneys in the room. And they were one surprised that Jessica Mann, there was no rebuttal to the cross-examination. So it seems like this case is moving along quite quickly. I would anticipate that the prosecution is going to end their case in chief sometime either today or tomorrow. And then we'll see whether or not the defense is going to put on a case. Now, the defense has made multiple arguments about missing evidence, uh, Brady violations, that being exculpatory information that should have been turned over, and a lot of missing emails, cell phone um, contacts, and text messages that might lay groundwork for other witnesses. Whether or not that's just smoke and mirrors and asking for a mistrial, I'm not sure, but I think they will definitely put on at least a bit of a case, so we might see this case stretch on to the rest of the week. Brian, thank you so much. We are very lucky to have you in that courtroom. Since we can't be live in there, it's great to have you there. Thanks so much. Thank you very much.